Hello, I'm Jenny Glover. Today we're on the campus of the University of Maryland University College at the Inn and Conference Center. We're going to interview Eric Key, Art Program Director. I am so delighted to have this opportunity to, to chat with you today, and I've, I've got a bunch of questions for you. And I'd like to know, first of all, as director of the UMUC program, what do you do? <laughs> Actually, I just, I simply manage. I used to be a curator where most of my time was on the floor hanging exhibitions and planning uh, exhibitions from the beginning to the end. Now I'm the administrator and very little time on the floor. I, I guess that's why I have a curator. But as a director, I'm responsible for the overall management of the, of the arts program here at UMUC. Um, a lot of things that I do is paperwork, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, making sure that the staff uh, does not violate any laws, uh, particularly when it comes to copyrights, uh, and things like that. And then, of course, trying to get the money and making sure the budget's in place and we follow UMUC pro protocol for expenditures and, and, and things like that. Uh, so that's what I do. All the hard work, huh? Uh, I don't know. I, I really enjoy curatorial work. So every now and then I have to get up from my desk and, and, and help Brian on the floor. And uh, it, it, it is really such a joint effort around here. We don't have a large staff, so it takes all the manpower uh, to do it. It's unfortunate that I, I guess it's unfortunate that I just like being on the floor. I guess from a curatorial point of view, he would probably want me in my office because of my opinion tend to matter. <laughs> and as curator, what, what does that entail? It's really, it, by definition, is to care for. And as a curator, you care for, in this case, the art collection uh, from development to basic making sure that uh, the work is not damaged, that it's hung properly, proper lighting, uh, as we say in the art world, all the things that we as human need to live by are most detrimental to artwork. Uh, heat, air, water, uh, but those are the things that we try to make sure that in this environment that uh, we protect, pr protect the art. And so that's what a curator does. And what are your biggest challenges running the art program? Always um, funding, uh, development, and development from a standpoint of uh, more community involvement and in getting the community uh, aware of what we do and interested in the arts. Um, I think there is a strong interest in the arts, obviously. It's just getting a lot more diverse people in these doors to see the exhibition and, and expose them to um, this multitude of art and artists that we have uh, at UMUC. So I think those are my, my biggest challenge. Uh, I enjoy my, my job. I must say that. Uh, I enjoy it because it gives me the freedom to work with, with other artists. It gives me the freedom to get out and learn the community. It gives me the freedom to represent uh, the university at official events. Um, and there are you know, some travels, not a lot, but uh, I get to travel and in those venues meet and see and learn uh, and develop uh, and bring those, uh, uh, that energy back to the arts program. Eric, you have a, the university has a wonderful, uh, several collections. Mm -hmm. Want to talk a little bit about the different collections? Oh, we have technically five different collections. One is the Maryland Artist Collection, which is our strongest collection in our, I guess, one's our premier collection, because we're hoping to have a piece of artwork by every Maryland artist in the state of Maryland. Uh, and having said that, we also use Northern Virginia and D.C. as a part of our collection parameters. Uh, we have a wonderful Asian art collection. Uh, it's, it's some very, very old pieces, uh, and it's continuously growing. Uh, we just had a major donation last year uh, from a collector out of um, Chicago, uh, Ivor Nelson, and it, it, it really broadened that collection. We have what we call the education collection, which are those pieces um, that may not fit within our collection parameters, but we care for them and present them just like they were a part of the collection. What do you mean they don't fit 
in the parameters? Uh, let's say if it's, for example, African art. We don't collect African art. Uh, but the president may have gotten a, a donation or a, a, a gift uh, and as a UMUC employee, any gifts given to its employees must become um, a part of the, uh, the university system of Maryland's possessions. Uh, but instead of trying to insult somebody and giving the work back, we use it in the education collection. Uh, and maybe one day we can pull those pieces out. If they, in, in this case, if they are African artwork and we have a significant number of them, then we can develop an African art collection. But it's little things like that. We don't collect a lot of um, uh, material culture, archives, uh, old newspaper, things like that. Uh, but sometimes people want to give us those things, and we want to be good stewards, and we don't want to insult anyone, so we may put them into the education collection. Um, another collection is, is the, we have the Herman Merrill collection. We have uh, some Oppenheimer collection, Gladys Goldstein collection. Most recently, Rainy Matters collection. Um, we have Cy Moore, Cy, Cy Gresser's collection, uh, and uh, Bill Taylor is the one that we're working on. Actually, there's two we're working on, Bill Taylor and um, Raul Middleman. And, and when I said those, Ra Raul Middleman. And when I say collection, these are people that, well, artists first, and then people second, uh, who have donated more than 10, 15 pieces to us, so we formulate a collection within the Maryland Artist Collection. Um, I'm trying to name the other two collections, but I, I, my mind just went blank. Um, well, that's more than five. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, all those I named just a few minutes ago really fall under the Maryland Artist Collection. Oh, okay. And uh, kind of separated, I'm, I'm going to give this little history background. One of the other collections happens to be the Doris Patz collection of Maryland artists. Back in 1978, early 80s, Doris uh, started working with uh, the former first lady, uh, Bailey Massey, to really start the arts program. Bailey and uh, her husband, uh, Ben, were stationed overseas in Asia, and they took the position as president, uh, relocated here to Adafi, and came into this building, there were nothing but blank walls. So Bailey kind of took it on part of herself, said we have to do something with these walls, and uh, what should we do? It'd be wonderful to put some artwork up there. So Bailey decided to reach out to people in the community, and Doris Patz was one of those first persons um, who came and began to help us, because Doris had all of this contact with local artists, and. Um, she started uh, asking them for donations, and thus the Doris Patz collection of Maryland artists began. And actually, that's the, uh, the that's beginning of our collection overall. Started right there. Mm -hmm. So, in many respects, we we kind of consider Doris as one of the founders of the arts program, along with Bailey Massey. Uh, Herman Merrill um, uh, came on board. Uh, to help him, he donated, uh, well, after his death, his wife donated a significant number of his works to us. I think we have 71 uh, pieces by him. And Who's we named that? Uh, Doris, uh, Herman Merrill. Herman Merrill, uh, Baltimore artist, and um, just a wonderful landscape painter. Um, spends a lot of his, t spent a lot of his time, because he's now deceased, uh, in Provincetown, uh, Rhode Island. Uh, most recently, I forgot about our, our Shepherd Gallery, but I guess we'll come back to that. <laughs> well, let's talk about it now while it's in your mind. Okay. Uh, two years ago, we developed the Leroy Merritt Center for the Art of Joseph Shepherd. Uh, it is a basically three-room gallery, approximately 5,000 square feet, uh, that was built in 19, or not 19, 19, I'm dating myself now in 2009. We had the groundbreaking celebration and it's really to house all the art for the career of uh, Mr. Shepard. Uh, it has his sculpture, his paintings, and a study center, his line drawing. Mr. Shepard, um, being a Maryland artist, taught uh, here, had a lot of, uh, uh, there were a lot of students who studied his anatomy, uh, anatomy um, he's written many books and he's included in a lot of books. Uh, so uh, he's one of the well-known artists uh, of Maryland. 
So my predecessor decided that we wanted to make sure he was involved and his legacy was, uh, will continue for generations to come. So they uh, mounted a capital campaign and built an extension of this building, uh, and it's called the Leroy Marriage Center for the Art of Joseph Shepherd. So, you know, I obviously I always invite uh, all the audience, the community, to come and see that facility as well as see the art throughout the building. Now, where is that? Uh, it's just, uh, that would be east of, of where we're located here uh, in the main gallery. So it's right, right down the hall here. For Voicing Art, I'm Jenny Glover.